the trick to playing song two is to try and play it as badly as possible. Graham Coxon, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Is this loud enough? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be playing through Sono, which is our new guitar audio interface. So for those who don't know about Audient, we have a heritage in creating large format recording consoles. We basically combined uh, in partnership with Two Notes uh, Audio Engineering, who are really well known for their uh, cab simulations. And we've created this ultimate guitar audio interface. And Graham's been playing with it the last couple of weeks. And we're going to hear what Graham has come up with in terms of some of the sounds. Well, I, uh, first of all, I'm very technically phobic, so this is actually a very, very simple, straightforward way of uh, plugging in a guitar to an interface. I, th I think a lot of people, when they get faced with um, something like this, they'll go to a, a, a sort of something that they're at home with. So I'm kind of been known for a 4x12 cabinet most of my, my life. Um, I've limited myself to 4x12 cabinets, so I suppose one wants to replicate the sound we've, we've, we've been used to over the years. So I went with this to start with, which is... Um, it's like a Celestion uh, Vintage 30 Closed. Celestion. So yeah. <laughs> Why don't we hear what that sounds like, and then I can explain a little bit about what's going on, and we can play, a, play around with it. And this is a set neck style guitar, so um, with humbucking pickups, so a bit more umphy than the, um, a Telecaster that I would normally play as well. But it does have that trick to. Which is quite familiar for my kind of. That kind of thing. Cool. Sounding good. <laughs> so that's all just through the Sono interface. Um, I'll just explain a little bit what, about what's actually happening in it, and then we can just play around and do some crazy stuff. So from Graham's guitar, it's going into a uh, high voltage 12x7 valve. So you've got a valve front end on it. And then it goes into a power amp simulation. So that's happening in this two note software here. Uh, the drive stage gives you a nice bit of crunch to it. That's, that's where most of that kind of distortion was coming from. Uh, you have an EQ on here, which Graham's got uh, the treble all the way up in this case. <laughs> and then uh, bass and mid boosted a little bit as well. And then it goes into this software, which is actually running on the unit itself. So you won't notice a delay between what Graham's playing and what's actually coming out of the speakers. Um, and as Graham said, yeah, he's got a Celestion uh, Vintage 30. We're miking it up with a, I think it's an SM57 style microphone. And we're in a room called Studio B. I mean, I went with this setup because it's a familiar kind of setup. It's a, it's a sound that I'm used to. So I think when you get anything like this, you go to your normal setup to sort of see how it relates to your, your sort of real life experience. And so, um, so this relates very closely to my real life experience. And the microphone is not close mic, but we can, um, we can see that it makes quite a difference and, 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 and um, takes into consideration the type of environment the amp and the microphone is in as to what kind of ambience you get when the mic is pulled hither and thither from the um, amplifier. So here's a... Uh, yeah, this is great. This we're in a cathedral great. now. So if you play a bit now... There we go. So you can move the distance uh, completely close now, but then also you're getting a nice bit of reverb from the cathedral. And then you can also... 
sort of yeah, turn up the drive. It's a massive sound. Then very easily go back to it just being nice and sweet again. Lovely. <laughs> so Shui, you've done something with a this is one that you've been talking about, this rising sun amp. So yeah. take us through what you've been doing here. Well, this is a one by eight cabinet. And so for me I would I would look at this and think, what a piddly little thing. Um, I wonder what this sounds like. It must sound awful. But what's kind of good about, about this as well is that you can get... This tiny amp, has, it's kind of a nasty little, ag, you know, sort of aggro. And, and you can, of course, get what a lot of people is, are after is sort of authentic kind of cab sound sort of um, there's a lot of thing placed on authenticity and valves and things like this which this does in spades so you can you can get all of that but also you can get more unusual sounds very quickly by dialing in and contouring the sound so I'm actually quite a fan of because um, I always quite like distortion units straight into a DI straight into the desk for an absolutely blitzy sort of sound and, and that's very easily recreatable as well with the um, if you go fully up onto the modern and brighten it up you get a kind of really nasty kind of that sort of a sound and, and then in contrast you can pull it all the way back to and all the way to vintage your, uh... which is really nice as well so i mean for people for for, for for me say the idea that i can very easily if i'm making a, a rock track or something like that which might have two guitars they're going to be extreme panned left and right i could have one that has a really vintage sort of tone like that and perhaps bring the the microphone further away yeah and um, maybe going to the loft to the vintage right there you go. Oh, oh yeah i mean a different loft a loft sort of space um, so I think you can quite easily um, mix guitar sounds that have quite radically different EQs, I suppose, what you, you, you call it, um, you know, quite effortlessly, rather than always striving for a perfect fat valve sound, which you can get really, I think, by just going straight up the middle with these, with these gets you just kind of like a normal nice valve sound but then you can go to extremes on it so you can put some sort of different energy onto the sound make the sound a little more combatant and um, and I think make for a lot of interesting you know guitars left and right so should we yeah. should we maybe build something but I love this little sound? I love this little rising sun amp that's excellent really nasty little thing Yeah. Cool. So let's make. Why don't we try and recreate something like an old blur track or something, like one of your yeah. classic kind of tones? Where would you probably start? I guess, like, as if you said, probably to a do four by twelve. Like uh, Song Two E. Yeah. So I mean, what, what I wanted to do with Song Two originally was have the skinniest, almost like an awful guitar sound. So like a really skinny. Um, not much sustain sort of sound that would contrast heavily with the huge sort of sound that we were wanting to get in a chorus. So, 
So I could go for something like this and then, um, well, we'd back, we'd have to, we'd back this right off, probably take yeah. some of the bass out. So it becomes a sort of an, that sort of a sound. You could even make it even skinnier. Or maybe do that too. But then we've got the Friedman pedal as well. Oh yeah, and you can of course put a whole pedal board in front of this as well, just so, so you are actually treating it just like an amplifier. Yeah. yeah. trick to playing song two is to try and play it as badly as possible like <laughs> all your fingers are in pain and you don't really want to be playing but you have to that's what I thought a lot of um, American Indian punk players were doing at the time sort of playing in a, in a, in a willfully rubbish way so that when they're playing really well it sounds really great that sort of thing nice that's sounding and good and that's just with this little one yep and there's uh there's loads of other ones that you can choose from um there is literally there's billions there's of so of, yeah sono comes with uh 20 cabs to choose from we've basically created a uh uh a list of all these ones that you can choose from which there's something for everyone but this is the entire two notes um collection basically they've got hundreds and hundreds and you can buy them all on the store for hardly any money at all. It's great. So what should we what should we try out? Do you want to try something that's a bit more modern? A bit more modern. I mean, I don't really know. Oh, what an angle. And, angle 60. And, yeah, what is that like? So now we're now into a uh, 4 by 12 instead of a, what was that, a 1 by 6, you say, the other one, one by was. 8, I one think. 1 by 8. Yeah. So this one's going to be a much more like meaty and beefy. So it's a lot more scooped. Yeah. Yeah. And let's and get it, a close mic and yeah. modern it, modernize it a little bit. There we bit. go. Yeah. We can try a different mic as well. At all. Try a ribbon or something, yeah. a ribbon mic. One, there we two, go. One. Cool. Yeah, and this is all just happening on the unit itself. This is just actually, this is just controlling what's happening on the unit. So it is all just low latency. Um, and of course, if you didn't want to, if you didn't want to use all this, you've got all these other audio interface kind of features. You've got your little home studio kind of setup. Yeah, um, I mean, I have three three little setups at the moment. There's a big one by the seaside in um, England. Then there's one in London. And now, and now one in um, Los Angeles, and um, I basically use well, I've got a, the a, a, the big desk which is yep. called the ASP8024. Yes. Yeah. And and Massive the ID44 desk. here, and also Sono. I, that, that's where I'm going to be operating that one. And the one in the middle, next to the one on the far right there. Yeah. <laughs> so I use all these. I, I use these all the time. They're pretty much instrumental, recording the end of the end of the effing world soundtrack I don't yeah. you, know, you, you sort of need so so little equipment these days to achieve pretty pretty good stuff um, and then to be able to create very usable releasable put on televisionable type time music it, it seems um, quite simple unless I'm missing something or I'm extremely jammy um, it seems to me that you just need a few good quality things and you're and you're off you know and um, for, 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 um, I mean, you can use this with microphones as yep. well, isn't it? You know, it, it's an interface, so microphones, and the microphone can be put through the 
Yeah, you can, you can put, can't put channel one through the valve and through all the two notes. So yeah, you can. I know you're a fan of making weird and wonderful kind of sounds. So you could put whatever you wanted yeah. through all of this. So you can fry your the, vocal a little exactly, bit. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and and also you can, you can expand it as well. So you've got uh, an optical input. So if you've got like a a rack mount mic pre of some sort, you can expand up to ten. So you can record drums with it if you wanted to. And then a, a, a reamp output as well. So yeah. you've got you've got a couple of uh, very nice. Very nice cabinets. I think after this weekend, I might have one more. Uh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So you can reamp from the... Yeah, so you, you, can, you can record with, uh, with all this two notes emulation. You can record it into whatever you're recording, but at the same time record without any of this. So you get like a nice clean signal. You can take that at a later date, send it out of this into your own, your own cabinet, mic it up, and then bring it back in. So this is great if you come up with your next uh, your next hit at midnight and you can't disturb your family or your neighbors and you can basically just run it through your amp at a later date. But at midnight, you can put your headphones on, use all this and get the performance down. Yeah, a lot of people rely on reamping. Yeah. Chenzo Townsend is mm. pretty famously reamping everything in the world. So yeah, um, yeah he's... Yeah. Um, I mean, one of the things I think it's... One of the things we try to do with this, which I think you're showing very naturally, like just talking to you about it before, it's all about providing something for someone and just making it really easy to like just get ideas down and to create a tone. So we've obviously just showed a bunch of different sounds and it took us hardly any time at all yeah. to just craft these amazing sounding and very contrasting sounds. And so anyone can do that, whether you're you know, just a guitarist who wants to use it without a laptop and have it like on your coffee table and just practice with headphones. Or if you're like a, a studio owner who wants to basically be able to very quickly dial in some tones and then record a band, maybe reamp it at a later date, maybe expand it, like the options are all there, so. Yeah, what I really like about it is that I, you can go on the drop down menu and you go, oh yeah, I've always wondered what that amp sounds like. And then <laughs> yeah. you can um, have a play with it without having to go to a music shop and you know, feel embarrassed about sitting there and not really knowing what to play through yeah. an amplifier. And so I, I, I'm not familiar with these amps. I know they're used for a certain type of music, and but they don't need to be exclusively used for that type of music. And they're, they're just good fun. So you could just make a ton of noise, really. Nice. Lovely. One more song. One more song. Which one? Go on then. Oh, Coffee and TV. I, oh, I'll probably, I'll probably mess it up. And we have to get an appropriate amplifier. All right. What would you like? Should we get a punchy twin type fendery kind of thing? Yeah, that's more like it. I might mess it up because I'm not really used to. Because when I was writing these chord, these chord shapes. I didn't realize that the next chord shape was actually a major and a minor at the same time, but I didn't know that. I was just trying to be um, deliberately awkward and annoy the rest of the band. But it's something like...
like that. Thank you. Thank you.